नमस्ते वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड हिंदू न्यूज हिंदू टॉक शो एंड टुडे वी हैव मिस्टर मैथ्यू बोफोर्ट ही इज एन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटीज एट महर्षि यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ मैनेजमेंट एट फेयरफील्ड आयोवा थैंक यू मैथ्यू फॉर बीइंग हियर इट्स अ प्लेजर टू हैव यू एट द हिंदू टॉक शो ऑफ वर्ल्ड हिंदू न्यूज एंड वुड यू लाइक टू गिव योर ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन टू आवर ऑडियंस Yes, uh it's an honor to speak about India and the knowledge that India has given to the world. I've recently been giving lectures on Indian art in Washington DC, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland and other cities. And I become aware through my research that the Vedic wisdom that underlies Hinduism and underlies all of Indian culture really provides the practical wisdom that is needed by the modern world and by modern people in the west in india and everywhere so i wanted to share uh, some of those thoughts with you the uh, vedic world view as you know is a holistic understanding that shows the interconnectedness of humanity with animal life with plant life with the cosmos with everything and with other people and this sense of interconnectedness is much needed by modern people rather than a sense of duality and a sense of conflict that we're all in this together and we need to live together harmoniously now the question becomes how to do that you know in a fast paced stressful world certainly it's that way in the west and in my trips to india i've noticed at least in the big cities that it's becoming more that way in india as well Right. as people adapt more of a western lifestyle. Right. And so it's a challenge to all of us how do we fulfill the vedic precepts that underlie hinduism, you know, in this kind of world. And <clears throat> I think of the Bhagavad Gita mm. and I think of Krishna giving Arjuna advice on the battlefield. We're all kind of living on the battlefield of life now. Right. And um Arjuna is confused and uh, uncertain about how to act and Krishna gives him two uh, key uh, principles right uh, at least in my reading one is nistra gunyo bab arjun okay be without the three gunas right and what does that mean be without the three gunas well one way to interpret that it me is it means be without um the activity of the senses the mind the intellect the ego all of those waves of activity in our mind be right. without those and experience the atma right the pure state of being the pure state of consciousness inside right and then the next piece of advice he gives him is soon after is once you've done that once you've experience that being right then yoga sta karu karmani established in being perform right. action so this is a this is a key this is a a secret right. really a secret key to successful and fulfilling action in the modern world we have to establish ourselves in the atma right and then on that basis of that inner peace that sat chit ananda then we can act successfully and happily Uh, in the world maintain our equanimity in the midst of dynamic activity absolutely as arjuna had to do right now at the university where i teach maharishi university of management right it was founded by a great indian sage maharishi mahesh yogi yeah. and he brought out to the world uh, a vast array of vedic knowledge right uh, in, a, in an easily understandable way but also he brought out techniques to fulfill these um vedic precepts right so there's a technique of transcendental meditation that maharishi brought out okay that allows the mind very simply and easily and effortlessly to go from the sensory level move through the activity of the mind less and less activity and experience a least excited state of consciousness okay that's the atma the yeah. pure consciousness and then when that is experienced just 20 minutes twice a day in this unique meditation technique that is unique because it's simple it's easy it's effortless 
and it's been validated by over 350 uh, published scientific studies right. that show benefits for the mind, body, and behavior. Because when we really experience the Atma, right. then it, it carries through in our daily life. Uh -huh. And we feel less stress, right. we're more resilient to stress, yes. the mind is clear, right. there's more creativity, and there's more happiness in the midst of activity. Right. So all these benefits have been experienced and scientifically validated. And we actually use that in our educational system here at Maharishi University of Management. We get people, we get students from India, right. from uh, other Asian countries, from Europe, right. from the United States, from all over the world, different cultures and different backgrounds. But they come and they learn this self-development technique, which is rooted in Vedic mm -hmm. wisdom. What Maharishi did was he distilled the essence of the Vedic wisdom yes. and he put it into a practical, systematic form that anyone can practice. So our students practice that here. And they also have an opportunity to learn advanced techniques, right. like the Transcendental Meditation and TM City program, which develops full integration of mind and body in all aspects of awareness. And they get an opportunity to learn about Vedic knowledge. Uh, there's a degree here. We teach the subjects that most American universities teach, right. sciences, arts, and humanities. Yep. And we also offer a degree for those who are interested in Vedic science, yep. in the Vedic knowledge. So, and the Vedic knowledge becomes fully meaningful on the basis of direct experience. Right. Many great sages and rishis in the Vedic literature have pointed that out, uh, that experience, experience of the Atma is fundamental to really understanding the Atma yes. and understanding higher states of consciousness. So that's what we focus on here. And so it's been, um, I came to this university, I studied at Yale, and I taught at other universities, but I came to Maharishi University of Management right. because I wanted to be in a place that would integrate consciousness into the study of disciplines, would right. integrate the Atma, the knowledge and experience of the Atma into the study of the history of art, which is what I teach mainly, but also into the sciences and into all the disciplines. And there's some fascinating research going on here, some of which we've heard on this weekend right. Right, we've been on, about how scientific discoveries by the leading edge of scientists around the world right. are validating uh -huh. the Vedic worldview, the ancient worldview of the yes. Rishis. There are many, many similarities. And this is uh, a great place to s study and learn about those connections. So for, um, for individuals who want to preserve the great cultural uh, discoveries right. of India, mm -hmm. of the Vedic tradition which lies at the root of India, and also be knowledgeable about the modern world right. and be successful and dynamic, but also enlightened <laughs> right. in the modern world. Yes. This is a great place to study. And, uh, and we and so I, I just I wanted to share that with you and, and your audience. So Matthew, my, that was very informative uh, uh, information on uh, Shimarishi's management school, uh, university and uh, how they are helping the society in uh, getting enlightened uh, and both accommodate in the modern world requirements and also the uh, keeping a high spiritual level in dealing with such situations. The challenge today we have for the society uh, and uh, that how everybody is not able to attend the university and enroll for courses and how we can take this message of Maharishi and the Vedic principles to the common society and the masses mm -hmm. so that they they can um, learn and grow and uh, basically and, uh, bring their conscious uh, upwards? That's an excellent question. You know, and Maharishi was a very practical man. Uh, he shared that aspiration, you know, to bring this knowledge around the world to all, all sorts of people, all levels of society. And we do, do offer courses online, but I know that your question is, is a much more uh, basic question. And my answer would be uh, simply, Transcendental meditation. 
this technique. It's it's the it's the essence. You know, Vedic wisdom is like a huge tree. It has so many branches right. and so much wisdom there. And transcendental meditation is like one of the fruits of that tree. Right. You don't have to know the whole tree. Right. You don't have to know how the tree grows or or what branch does this and what branch does that. You can take the fruit mm -hmm. and you can eat it. Okay. And just so people anywhere, there are centers that teach transcendental meditation, there are teachers of transcendental meditation all over the United States, all over India, all over the world. Mm -hmm. One can easily learn this technique in a few hours. It's so simple because it's so natural. Okay. And because it's so natural, it's so effective. It can be learned in a few hours, and then one can begin to experience that inner peace, that inner equanimity that Krishna was talking about right. to Arjuna as the basis of dynamic activity. Yep. So that would be uh, what I would recommend. It's 20 minutes twice a day. can be practiced anywhere. Okay. It's not hard to do. It's, not, it's easy to learn. And the, uh, yeah, that is a viable solution for the uh, general masses who are not able to attend the university or have, don't have time or resources to go and enroll, enroll for such courses. Uh, how about your own personal experience? Uh, were you from the very beginning involved in uh, meditation or what made you, uh, you said you are a Yale student and uh, you... Yes, I, I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship to Yale and I had heard about transcending before I went there. I would heard about the value of transcending which is glorified, you know, in the Vedic literature by many sages and rishis. And I wanted to know more about it. I wanted to know how to do it. And fortunately, uh, there, uh, I saw a poster of Maharishi within a week of arriving at Yale. There were many Yale students and faculty learning Transcendental Meditation, and, and I had the opportunity to learn um, in my freshman year. And then, um, as I continued to meditate, um, things began to happen. It, it expands the mind, and that clarity of the mind continues in activity. Right. So, um, I had a professor who had me my first year and my fourth year, and what he told me was, he said, you understand art, which is what I was studying, the history of art, right. you understand it so much more deeply now. Mm -hmm. What have you been doing? Yeah. And I said, well, I think it's the transcendental meditation, you know, has clarified my mind and expanded my mind. And I ended up graduating with honors. And some of my professors learned. So that was one thing. And then over the years, as I've continued to meditate regularly, what I've noticed is um, a growing inner peace. Okay. A growing um, unshakability no matter what happens in the world around me. Right. So that's, um, uh, I think it's something much needed in the world today. Yep, and uh, of course in the current uh, worldwide uh, uh, scenarios we are seeing, it's, uh, it is of course a viable solution for a world peace and uh, humanity on a whole uh, overall scope. There's been some very fascinating research done, it's been replicated many times now, where Marshi proposed this idea that if people would meditate in groups, right. most people do Transcendental Meditation alone in the privacy of their own homes or offices. Yeah, or I've heard of it. Yeah. But uh, he, he had this, he proposed this idea that if people would meditate in groups, especially the advanced transcendental meditation right. Siddhi program, that it would create an influence that would radiate out to the environment, an influence of harmony and peace. Right. So several times, um, groups of advanced meditators went to trouble spots around the world, actually where sometimes when there were wars going on. Okay. I went on one of these, okay. and it was in Kosovo, former Yugoslavia, yeah, the Kosovo conflict. Yeah. And 
all we did was do our long meditations TM City program in groups. We didn't okay. go out and talk to people. We didn't put articles in the newspaper. Yes. We didn't try to convince people to be more peaceful. Okay. We just did our programs and radiated that influence. And within, it took a fairly large group, but within uh, a few hundred, not that many, right. but within uh, a few weeks or, and months, things settled down. Less war deaths, less conflict, and finally the situation was resolved. Now, one may think, well, there are many factors involved in a situation like that, and of course there are. Right. But this has been repeated like 15 times, you know, in different situations, and it's always worked when there have been enough people as long as they stay there. Right. Now, uh, one might ask, well, why don't you create a group big enough for the whole world or put a group in the Middle East right now? Right. Well, those projects, you know, were funded by private individuals like myself, you right. know, who paid their own way to go there and be part of it. Yeah. And Maharishi's goal is to have a group of 9,000 Vedic pundits in India. Okay doing these programs and doing yagyas for world peace okay um, to create permanent world peace and he has a campus for that in the middle of India right now near Jabalpur Jabalpur yeah, yeah. Um, and there, there are about 2,000 Vedic pundits there now but according to the scientific calculations and the field results from doing these projects it, re it will require about 9,000 to create an influence for the whole world. Okay. So this is one of the major uh, aims of the Transcendental Meditation Organization. But it requires uh, funding, you know, it requires support for those yes. basic pundits. That's a very, uh, that's a very thoughtful, uh, and then this was implemented, as you said, in Kosovo, where you went to the group and eventually group uh, start uh, uh, doing transcendental meditation and within six seven months the war casualties and the violence came down which makes it uh, uh, very uh, important in resolving the civilizational and other conflicts we see around the whole world actually we once had a group of 7,000 in India okay Vedic pundits you know highly trained experts in the Vedic knowledge traditional Vedic pundits this was near, uh, it was in Noida, near Delhi. Yes. And um, when that group was together doing their group Transcendental Meditation and Team City program and doing the traditional yagyas for world peace, some amazing things happened in the world. At that time, 7,000 was enough for the right. whole world. Since then, the population has grown in the world. It right. requires 9,000. But during that time, it was the time when the Berlin Wall came down, okay. the Cold War ended peacefully, okay. yeah. all those countries in Eastern Europe became free, and there were headlines in major papers that had headlines like, peace is breaking out all over. Okay. It was a very positive time for humanity. Now, due to insufficient funds, that group, you know, at Lat we were able to do the movement, the Transcendental Meditation Organization was able to do that for about a year and a half. Right. And then it had to disband. So, but it shows us uh, the power of these traditional Vedic performances. And uh, that it is there in the Vedic literature, the idea about if you have groups of people together right. transcending and doing yagyas, it can produce extraordinary results. And Marsh, you know, he gives credit to all of his teachings. To his teacher, who was Brahmananda Saraswati, okay. Shankaracharya of Jyotirmat, one of the most respected Indian spiritual leaders of the 20th century, okay. who was um, admired by Radhakrishnan, who was, you know, one of the pres first presidents in yes. India. He's um, written a couple of books too. Yes. Yeah. Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, I have read his uh, right. uh, commentary on Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Great Indian philosopher. Yes. So he admired uh, Brahmananda Saraswati, and Maharishi was with him for 14 years as his personal secretary. And he gives the credit to him for all of these really ancient Vedic teachings that now Maharishi is bringing out in a modern form. Right. So. Not only personal peace, 
its society and the larger society across the continents. Transcendental meditation has the capacity and power to bring peace and it solace. Has, it has that potential. Um, when individuals meditate, it, it, it creates a peaceful influence for them and for their families yes. and for their surrounding community. But if, if larger groups can do it together, then that can create an influence that spreads out to a much further uh, distance. And there are laws of physics that support that theory, right. uh, how this could happen. Um, it has to do basically with contacting a field which unites everything and everybody. Physics calls it, quantum physics calls it the unified field of all the laws of nature. Okay. But in the Vedas, uh, it's been called pure consciousness, pure awareness, uh, Brahman. You know, it's that all-encompassing field of consciousness of which we can partake at our deepest level. That's what Transcendental Meditation is about, to contact that and experience it and identify ourselves with it. So it's something very personal, but it's something very cosmic at the same time. And when that field is enlivened um, by groups of people transcending together, then it creates waves of uh, dharmic influence, really, evolutionary influence. Okay. To, as you know, the, the purpose of dharma is harmony in society. And harmony is what is much needed in the world today. So you just said that when groups of people meditate in transcendental meditation, and there is, uh, it brings, uh, and more bigger the group is, the more uh, vibrations it spreads and the you know the stress in the society and the different countries cultures comes down and you said there is a you said the quantum physics has a scientific uh, so you know there are theories in quantum physics that support how this could be possible um, and the and then there's corroboration from the Vedic ancient Vedic wisdom which I feel is even more important. But, and there's scientific research. There have been um, 19 different published studies mm -hmm. about groups of people practicing the Transcendental Meditation SIDHI program, the advanced program, in groups. And the results were in the surrounding area, whether it be a city or a nation, depending on the group, size of the group, reduced crime, significantly reduced crime, right. reduced hospital admissions, and in war-torn areas, reduced war deaths, reduced casualties, and so forth. So it um, it works, and it needs to be implemented. Okay. To implement it, you know, requires the resources to, for instance, keep that group of Vedic pundits together right. um, as a career. You might say, peace professional peace creators. And you know, we have a group here in Fairfield, Iowa, right. in Marshy Vedic City, okay. just up the road from the university. There are a group of, the numbers vary from time to time, but it's 1,000 to 2,000 Vedic pundits, mm -hmm. traditional, from India, mm -hmm. who have come here, okay. and, and they do just that. They, uh, they do their long meditations and they do their Yagyas. Yeah, I have heard about uh, them in my, most of many newspapers across America and India. A lot of Vedic pundits are doing uh, group transcendental meditations. So is Ma it uh, just, uh, wait, just the Vedic pundits or just common masses can also join in the groups? Uh, uh, the, the, group? the group of Vedic city is just Vedic pundits. We like you know, you know keep them, maintain their cultural integrity okay. out there. They're, Vedic way of life. Okay. But here on campus we have these large golden domes where uh, students and faculty and townspeople come together to do the uh, practice. Okay. Marshi has explained that the ancient Vedic knowledge contains not only wisdom of life but technologies right. to enlighten people, to bring better health, uh, as in Marshi Ayurveda but also to create world peace. Right. There are technologies there. Now, they're not technologies of weapons. Right. They're technologies of consciousness, yeah. because the Vedic knowledge, its specialty was and is 
consciousness. Okay. Subject, it's a subjective science. Yes. You know, the rishis cognize the laws of nature in their own awareness. And they had to do, uh, you know, transcend to do that. So now we have an opportunity. Right. People in today's world have an opportunity to learn how to transcend through transcendental meditation and uh, to enliven the Atma, to enliven the Atma and fulfill really the um, spiritual aspirations uh, that have been so beautifully presented in the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads right. and uh, the Puranas. Yes. My one more question I have is, uh, you said the Vedic whole tree has fruits and you don't need to know the complete uh, how the branches, what uh, roots and all, so you can just t take the fruit and uh, help yourself go in peace and help the society mm -hmm. to be in peace. What are the other fruits uh, other than transcendental meditation for okay. the well, um, Any that, examples? Yes, that's the key one. That's a beautiful question. The Advanced TM City program. City means uh, perfection. It's the idea to develop perfection in the mind and the body and one's relationship to the environment mm -hmm. for the purpose of gaining enlightenment, not for the purpose of developing special abilities, but for the purpose of gaining integration of life, uh -huh. full potential. Right. Um, other fruits are um, Marshi Ayurveda, okay. the holistic science of health. Uh -huh. uh, many people know about Ayurveda. Marshi's life work was to go deeply into the Vedic wisdom with expert pundits okay. and to bring out the essence of it. Okay. In an integrated and very systematic way. Okay. So Marshi Ayurveda is uh, more profound and more comprehensive. Okay. So that that's another one. Another is um, Marshi Vedic uh, architecture. Okay. Vastu. Yeah. How to create homes and businesses, uh, and even communities, uh, in accord, in harmony with natural law, with all the laws of nature. Okay. That brings. There are many uh, buildings on campus here right. and in this community yes. that have been built according to Stapatya Ved. Yes. And the result I hear from the people who live in them and my wife who works yes. in one is more happiness, more yep. energy, better health. So our, the buildings around us uh, and the devata right. that they affect, you know, they, can, they influence us. I personally experienced it. I stayed in the university campus since oh. uh, two, two days and two nights and I feel uh, the impact of the positive, positive and environment here mm -hmm. and I saw the Vastu also and that uh, basically feels like uh, uh, quite a different feeling what you have in the metropolis uh, areas like mm -hmm. Chicago, Houston, New York and mm -hmm. what uh, I'm personally feeling here more of a... Yes, and if you if you go to another small town in Iowa and then come back here, you'll notice it's not just because it's a small town. Right. It's because in this town of 10,000, there are 3,000 people who do Transcendental Meditation. Right. And we have all of these buildings. Right. That are according to, built according to natural law. Yes. So that's another one of the fruits. Um, uh, Marsh has also, uh, also brought out teachings on uh, Jyotish, Jyotish, astrology, Yagya, yeah. and um, the interview. I should have I should have started with you asking me questions. Thank you, Matthew, for being here at uh, Hindu uh, talk show at World Hindu News. It was a pleasure to have you and uh, hear about transcendental meditation and how it can bring peace to an individual and society cultures across continents. Some of the examples you mentioned like in Kosovo and in uh, Noida and how the it uh, dramatically the world peace uh, and the events um, you know get, started getting resolved. Those were very informative for our audience and um, I wish you best of luck and uh, hopefully we see more people enrolling for Marshi University and uh, uh, you know, getting the fruits of uh, Shri Maharishi, uh, what they offer and uh, they start in their life uh, doing meditation and the other two fruits you said and uh, you know, live in the mod living in the modern world with, a, uh, with an elevated soul. 
Yes, living Vedic life in the modern world. And it's quite possible with this um, uniquely easy and profound meditation technique, transcendental meditation brought out by Maharishi. And I want to congratulate you on your ability to um, um, sum up what I was saying in such a uh, clear way. Thank you so much, Matthew. Namaste. Namaste.